Ever been told riding a motorcycle is dangerous and you've asked why? These Russians are about to answer that question for you. We'll get to that in a minute. In today's video, we'll be discussing the latest news going on on the front lines of Ukraine. Uh, but before we get into today's video, I would appreciate if you guys would subscribe to the channel to get regular updates on the situation going on in Ukraine, Israel, and around the world. Let's first start off with the Dnieper area where we see a huge concentration of Ukrainian fire. Uh, we see that the Ukrainians are using artillery shells, some type of shells or HIMARS systems to attack the Russians in this area near the Dachi area and near Ol Olishke. And also, uh, this area over here, Kalachrahari, where the Ru Ukrainian drones are pretty active in this area as well. Just a side note, some of these videos will be blurred because YouTube has very strict policies on violence. You can watch the uncensored version for free on my Rumble channel, uh, link in the description below. So, as you can see, the Ukrainians are heavily bombing this area, and they are using their drones, and I believe this is because the Ukrainians are about to um, do, sh these are shaping ops, and they are about to do a offensive, a small offensive in this area over here to gain some footholds on the Russian side of Dnieper. I believe this is a very slow battle strategy the Ukrainians are trying to do, this uh, offensive is being put together like a puzzle piece by piece but it's happening very slow so hopefully they won't uh awaken to the russians to their plans or that they just don't have the manpower to do it at the time so it's going very slowly let's go on to robotone where it's almost completely under russian control again we have ukrainian fpv drones attacking russian uh suppose uh supposedly russian strongholds in the area where their troops are as you can see the fpv drones are just uh destroying these buildings that the Russian troops all in. Uh, it's not, it, Robotone is basically does not exist anymore, so it's not a good place to be holding. Even reports from the Ukrainian soldiers I've read, um, they, they say they literally stay in basements until an attack happens, then they come out. So, uh, let's go over here to Orozhine, where the Russians did have all this under their control, and it seemed like they were going to advance further. However, Ukrainian counterattack may have just stopped that. In this video, we're not going to watch it fully because it is a rather long video. However, in this video, you see the Russian attacks that were being uh, conducted a couple of days ago and Russian uh, soldiers getting basically destroyed by FPV drones. And again, these are shaping ops for the counterattack that you're about to see right now. These are Ukrainian soldiers coming out of their uh, vehicle and they are going to launch a counterattack and try to drive these Russian forces out. This counterattack did take some time because it went from daytime to uh, night vision. So it did take some time, but however, at the end, we see that four Russian soldiers surrender to the Ukrainians and it was a Ukrainian victory. Also, the Russians did launch FAB uh, bombs over here and they're not going to be bombing their own men. So I would say most of Orozhane is back under Ukrainian control, if not all of it. We don't have geolocations for all of this area over here. But this area is obviously, they're not bombing their own men. And this area from here to here is where the Ukrainians attacked. And the fighting was going on in some of these buildings. Now moving on to the town that they just uh, took, Nova Mihailovka, a couple, uh, week, like a couple weeks ago. This is why motorcycles can be extremely dangerous, especially when you're trying to assault enemy fortified positions with them this will be blurred for you too but the link to the uncensored video is in the description so don't worry if you want to see that this is a colonnage that was left behind destroyed motorcycles where are the men where the men are currently sleeping with the fishes and as you can see dead soldiers over here just getting hammered by fpv drones i guess they wanted to make sure these guys were dead this is an absolute disaster an absolute slaughter i counted around seven uh killed russians but there were around like uh, 10 plus bikes again that's why you don't use motorcycles i get uh i get trying to new things and i get trying to improvise on a battlefield i get that but you don't want to be having dudes with motorcycles charging fortified positions especially when they're fpv drones in the skies now moving on to the avdivka area we've gotten nothing so far from kaskorivka uh, so moving on to the Avdivka area, we do have, we are seeing that the Ukrainians are using more and more artillery rounds, which should mean that the Ukrainians are getting the artillery from the West, which is obviously very, very good news. We see that the Ukrainians are basically destroying all these Russian buildings. Again, artillery, drones are very good, but artillery's 
nothing's going to be artillery when it comes to actually, uh, especially in the war, how the Ukrainians and Russians operate. Artillery is very key. So we do see some FPV drones being used in this video, but it's mainly artillery and it's doing a lot of damage. We're going to go to this video over here where you see a Russian group. This map has colored this in the red area because you saw this Russian group uh, basically chilling here before they were all uh, either killed or wounded by FPV drones. I wouldn't say this is under Russian control. It actually looks like a reconnaissance uh, group to me because if you look at this area, they're... Uh, all only like four dudes on screen over here that one's dead that one's dead actually there's five another one's dead on the train tracks those dudes are alive and they got pretty badly wounded from how it looks so i wouldn't say this place under russian control it actually looks more like a reconnaissance group in my opinion but it could be under Russian control at the moment. The Russian offensive here seems to have slowed down. And the reason being, I believe, is that the Western aid is finally coming. It's finally reaching the front lines. Of course, it was signed uh, weeks ago, but it's finally reaching the front lines. Uh, this is a Russian drone attack. Uh, it's actually debated whether, whether it's an Abram or a Leopard. Can't really tell from that footage. Not the best footage, obviously, but it's what we have to work with. Now, moving on, Russia continues to try to ev uh, advance uh, close to these areas near uh, Bakhmut. Obviously, the Russians' attacks on Chesivyol so far have led to nothing uh, successful, so they've basically been bombing the place to oblivion. And the Ukrainians basically just chill in their basements until an attack happens, and they know that by the FPV drones. Again, you're seeing the use of artillery by the Ukrainians to bomb these Russian positions. Again, artillery was something Ukraine's been asking for for a long time. It's very needed, very useful. So now since you, they're basically kind of on a same uh, playing field, even though Russia still outnumbers them, outnumbering them 2-1 to one in artillery is not nearly as bad as how it was before, 10-1 to one in artillery. So we have the Russians seem like they're going to do they're trying to do some shaping ops with these drone attacks over here and with these artillery strikes over here as well. Now moving on to this interesting footage that I was about to show in my last video but I did not do it. Footage from this uh village that is captured by the Russians. However, this is right outside we have a Russian attack. As you can see there are around 3 Russian soldiers versus uh it seems to be one Ukrainian soldier. And then Ukrainian reinforcements come. You see them coming in. That's very clear image for uh, drones. You see the Ukrainians firing artillery again, probably mortars. And you see the Russian columns being destroyed. Again, these columns were not destroyed by a mine, how it looks. And it definitely was not FPV drones. This is artillery 9 times 10 again. Just a perfect example why artillery was needed. As you can see, they're using artillery again, likely mortars in this case, for these Russian soldiers in this area. Now, some of these things are FPV drones, uh, like I'll show you uh, right after this. That's an FPV drone. It's hitting the abandoned vehicle. But a lot of this is artillery, and artillery is very important. That was artillery. This is an FPV drone, but most of it is artillery, and that's why it's very important. I don't know if these are Ukrainians or Russians, but it seems like they were retreating, so it was probably Russians because they kind of got destroyed, and then the vehicle shows up. So I, yeah, I think those are Russians. Anyway, that's basically all what's going on on the front lines. Also, you got another Ukrainian uh, drone attack on this uh, their borderlands. I believe this was footage from yesterday, so I don't know why this map has put it on as if it was from today. Uh, in the political area, two Ukraine state security uh, administration colonels detained because they were trying to assassinate Zelensky. Also, Putin was inaugurated today. Obviously, it's really nothing big because... Um, no one was holding their breath like who was going to win the presidential election. I believe we all knew Putin was going to win. Uh, however, Putin was inaugurated, and that's, I guess, good for him because he's in power, I believe, in th it I is until 2030. So, yeah, anyway, guys, that's all we have for today. Bye.